So I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, and uh, first item on the agenda is to review and vote on the meeting minutes of August 21st. I was not there, so I'll abstain, but I'm happy motion. to hear. Second. Uh, those in favor? Yeah. One abstention? Yeah. Okay. Um, vendor and payroll warrants have gone Close by. Yep. Excellent. Um, do we have any comments from the public on items not listed on the agenda? Nothing from you, Dan? Nat? Donna, and you're from Eversource. You're on the agenda. Okay, let's go straight to that. The uh, consider the petition submitted by Eversource for placement of a utility pole and wires for new electric service on Long Plain Road. Um, so can you uh, let me turn it over I don't know, to Brian or I to you? I believe I've seen all the sites uh, myself. So go right ahead and. Uh, this one's a new. One. I'm going for this one's just one. for a new service. Oh, this is for a new service. Yeah, right. This isn't for a regulator or anything. It's just a single. Oh, so this is not bowl. one of the ones we went to go it's see. It's not. I got to follow up. It's a single bowl for what, Mike? Purpose? New service. For a, an individual home new service? Yeah. Um, it's the same. It's the same. Whatever source they have. Okay. All right. I take it away. Sure. Hello. Uh, nice to meet you folks. My name is Nick Langoni with their resource. Um, Carla had moved on to another department, and, and I took it. And uh, Bob, I'm sure we'll like you too. Yeah. I might like you too. Yeah, I hope so. And um, so I'm filling in in her, her old role. So okay. we'll probably be working together a lot more. Um, I cover Waitley, Hatfield, Deerfield, so a lot of towns in this in this area. Okay. So, um, but this, I'm here today to talk about a new pole um, on Long Plain Road. Uh, the purpose for this new pole is to serve um, a new service. And we weren't able to, to provide for this new service with the existing infrastructure. The only way to do it was to put this new pole in the ground. Um, the, do you uh, guys have? Yeah, the, uh, the homeowner has been has been shown this, and the abutters have been notified and so on. Yeah, so I don't really have much more to say except for uh, the pole is kind of on the property line. There's kind of like. If you look at the drawing here, there's like a wooded area just north of the proposed pole. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of just on the precipice of that wooded area. So yeah. there's no sight. So you're saying there's no no real sight line from the neighbor, or there is? Um, from from ten, ten dash one. Yeah. No, they wouldn't be able to see the pole. Or twelve dash two. No, they probably. Uh, they probably could. I think the pole is kind of conspicuous though because it's abutting the trees there. Can I just ask a question? Sure. Just the question of an extremely non technical person. Okay. Why, if you've got houses on both sides, why can't it be served by existing infrastructure? Sure. Do you mind if I approach the desk? No. Oh, sure, sure. That would be helpful. Probably the easiest way. So currently, the pole line can I buy back? Yeah. goes like this. There's, the line is here, and here it crosses over to here, and it continues. So if I were to feed this house here, I need to put a pole across the street anyway. Why? Unless I want to dig under your road. Exactly. That's sort of my question. OK. So typically, we don't like to disturb the road. Um, it's not really how we do things nowadays. Uh, if that's the only way, with your permission, we could dig the road, but then I'd be coming back here for right. probably right. permission to dig the road anyway. Would you put, you wrote, you wrote on there, uh, existing poles, I don't actually see on here. Or is that, that's this Oh, it's kind of paint, oh, yeah. It's so kind of paint. So this guy, this guy is existing, so as I showed yeah. you, currently it goes like this. Well, why, why do you have why to can't go you feed it from this one? So, the reason we can't go from here to here is because we'd be trespassing on this guy's property. We like to keep the services on the, the property they're going to serve because mm -hmm. right now there'd be some amount of wire that's going to be on this guy's land. Well, and we don't have permission to be on his property unless we give, you know, we, we have to get an easement. This customer would have to get an easement from this guy to have a utility on his property. 
But, but that's on town property. The pool's on town property, yeah, not yeah. on yeah, private. It's on the east. It's on the town. Right, right away. Yeah, it's going deeper into the lot. Looks like. Right. So it would be possible for me to trench from here down, staying in town, taking, and then coming up. Mm -hmm. Why do Why do you have to trench? You, you said that from yeah. over here. There's overhead wires everywhere in town. Why do you have to trench now? Why can't yeah. you go from, the, yeah, from this pole yeah. to the house? Yeah. My, my, and that happens at my, at my house. The pole is on the neighbor's property across the street, yeah. and the wire comes across the street to yeah. my house. Sure, so, so. They, this is feeding his, his new garage that's way back here, and it's several hundred feet. Um, and his house is about right here. Uh -huh. So they, they, couldn't, they couldn't do this. Uh -huh. And his service is actually underground affecting this as well. So you, you can't just on his property? I had pitched the idea to him um, that the, probably the easiest way to do this is to not involve us or the tower and just to extend his service privately from his house to his garage, but he didn't want to do that. Mm. That was my first suggestion. Okay. <laughs> it might be easier for the people um, who are watching at home if you stand over here. Sure. Because then you're, you're, they're just seeing your back. So <laughs> a lot of people are waiting. So I'm going to... And again, if it's not possible, it's not possible. But I'm wearing the hat of I think all wires should be underground. Okay. Because I think telephone poles are just the biggest eyesore and detriment to <clears throat> property value you can imagine. Why wouldn't the town want to temporarily dig up the road, put it underground, so we have one less pole as an eyesore? Why, why not? So, so this existing pole on the north side already has several underground services coming off of it. I'm not sure if I can fit another You're one. Which pole? I'm sorry. Yep. Uh, sorry. This one here. Okay. Already has a couple services feeding yeah. existing houses, so I don't think I can fit another piece of pipe on there to feed this new house. This one is a possibility, but I have to trench along town taking this way. And then come up. Yeah, again, again, I, I and, and, and unless it's just such a huge cost yeah. issue that I don't get why we wouldn't be encouraging all underground wires wherever possible to, to minimize. I, and I, I can't. I, I mean, you get you avoid the weather the issues. Well, let's hear what Jonathan said. You, you avoid weather issues. When, you know, last I checked, we live in New England and. Ice and snow bring down waters all the time, and I, I just don't. And again, I know that this is no, no offense, kind of above your pay grade. But why wouldn't we, as a town, want waters underground as opposed to above ground? I, I don't get why it's just by default above ground. I think in this particular situation, um, the customer was kind of inconvenienced by the fact that the pole crosses from one side of the street to the other, kind of exactly where he needed his service to be. If this pole on 10-1 had been southerly just slightly, we could have just trenched to that easily. Um, but because this pole is you know, so far north onto, the, his abut onto his neighbor's property, we found the best way and it was to just move our lines from here to here. But I, I thought we established that this is not the neighbor's property. That this is the town's, yeah, but town property. It's not something where correct. We, it is within the town it. taking, but yeah, but for, so we don't need necessarily. I mean, we would want to notify, of course. Additionally, in this area here, uh -huh. there is, I think a, it's like an AT and T transmission line essentially. So I'd like to not disturb that if possible. There's like these big orange signs and some pipes. I'm not sure, nobody re returned my call when I called them, but I think it goes like this. It's underground? Yeah, it's like a AT&T mm -hmm. transmission line, I guess. I'm not sure if you guys know anything and about I, that. Well, I can't even find the property on the assessor's map because the numbers don't line up. This could be from any town. This map could be from any town. It doesn't match up. Uh, like, plot number 10 is here. Right? And then 10 1 is over here. And they're not, so they're not adjacent 
like they're shown on your map. So this, your map doesn't even match what our town assessor's maps are. Who's, who's the property owner here, Brian? You got the cards that went out to the yep. others. Who's that? On which one, Ten one you're saying? Yeah, well, either Ten one or number four. Who's that? Um, Joyce might both see it better. What, like, the ownership on the map. Well, right, but I don't know then what name to look for. Like, or what number on uh, uh, Long Plain Road is it, roughly? Is that near the trans transmission so line? That's oh, so that's near Egypt Road. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's your four. There's the four. Okay. Okay, so these are, so plot numbers are, are duplicated here. Probably different. Yeah. D different map numbers. Okay, so 10 1 is Jane Banish. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Ten one. Okay, it was four. Uh, was and four uh, doesn't actually show a building on that lot. Uh, but it says uh, Mark Lebrecht and Alan, uh, Alan and Joan M. Uh, but yeah, you're saying there's there. a, that there's actually a house there? There is. Yeah, there is. There's map. I talked, to Keith, yeah, I talked to Keith about it. And Keith, when I reviewed this, they own four and four dash One? property. Yeah. 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 He said there's a house there, a newer house, and then oh, because it's newer, a, it's not on there. Okay. Yeah, a barn that was the back. Okay. Part of the barn shows in the back. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what uh, Jane's house, like it's kind of wooded over here. Yep, there's some yeah. woods that go along this line and then that AT&T transmission line is within the woods there and crosses yeah. the street here. Okay. So I'd like to avoid like digging that, that area if possible. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. it might, it might be, there might be a way to do it if I work with AT&T, but I think that's a definitely more difficult route. You're just what I hear. You're you're putting a pole in because the homeowner doesn't want to want to trench from his house to his garage. That's what you're telling us. Well, there's there's a it might be a little more nuanced than that. I mean, there is well, you have to talk to his electrician about his his needs. I'm not sure what kind of needs his new service is going to have. Maybe there's mm -hmm. it's incompatible with his current service. That's that's. But I had offered that option. Mm -hmm. But what do you mean it's incompatible with service? That's There's a compatibility like issue with above ground or below ground? No, I think if he needs too much current, maybe the house doesn't get enough current. Right. And he needs, if this is really a workshop or a, a small business. Oh, I see. So you can't just move it from You might not be able chair. to do that with the well, well, then its electrician should put a heavier wire from the pole underground to his house to service that, not add another pole. It's. It, it's it's not addressing the problem. If the problem is not enough service to his house, you're saying you're gonna add another pole so he can get service from another location? Why, when he's already has it and it's underground, just put a heavier connection underground to the house and then the house will have adequate service to go to the, to the garage or, or his other building. Yeah, I mean that's a possibility I could talk uh, I, to. I, guess, I could talk to the customer about, but you know, that'd be you know putting additional costs on on the customer here. Well, it's his expense to put a, the service from his house, garage to the to his hot to his house. I mean, everybody in town has a garage. It's not connected to the house. Still your bed. Thank you. Well, this is the pole. It's a single pole with a single wire going to it. Or are you gonna you're gonna extend the service? on the west side of the road to that pole? We're gonna be moving our, our, our primary lines to that new pole. And, and then feed the house, on, feed the barn off that pole. Correct. And adding a new transformer to give some good reliability on that tree. Transform on the new pole? Yeah. What are you pointing at? I, I, that's the Google map and there's the little at and oh, uh, right. posted thing. And if I go back up one. Um, um, if you, if you guys prefer, um, we could put this on hold, and I could meet someone out there. And we could we could look at it. Um, instead of outright denying it, that's your prerogative. But what, what's the um, what's the urgency on the part of the property owner? Um, it's been a long time. I forget when exactly we met out there, but it was a couple months ago. So he's pretty anxious to get this going. 
Um, so probably before the end of the year, he'd like it. So I, I guess. I mean, come November, we can't months, dig the road. So. If it's been a couple months since you guys were out there, and I understand it may not have been you, Trent. It's been a couple months since you guys were out there, but we're just hearing about it now. If, if, if this had been an issue two months ago here, we could have been out there a month ago and then been back here on this date having already reviewed. Sure. I guess because it was a just a new service, I didn't anticipate um, yeah. too much pushback on this. In the future, I could certainly... Yeah. I think what you're hearing, and, and, and I wouldn't presume to speak for the two on my right, but I'm going to throw a dart. <laughs> I think we're all getting frustrated with the number of poles and wires that are running across town. Not that we want this to look like pristine colonial America, but the solution is just not more wires and poles that are, are, are an eyesore. Yeah, I, I know. And, what and also, it, 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 it's also every winter we have to you know deal with outages, et cetera, because of storms. Um, and if, if, if what you're saying is accurate, this proposed poll is going to be pretty darn close to trees. So, yeah. so it, it, you know, it, I, I think I think that we need to go in the direction of, of really taking a long, hard look at underground whenever possible, because it just seems like this is the 21st century. This is not 1950s America, America anymore, where we're just slapping stuff up. And, yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying, Jonathan, and, and he's, I'm hearing that there is underground service to that property, and I guess I would like to know why can't you add a heavier cable or increase that service to that property? I, I, I would like to know that before I guess I make a decision on whether you need another poll because the homeowner doesn't want to deal with his electrician and pay the extra expense. That's what I'm hearing. But I want from every source or the property. I mean, owner. I can't tell you that. Why, that's why the you can't? Decision there. Why you can't? I can't force him to increase the size of his service or his project if he's asking. He's asking me for a service, which is right. Well, then, well, then it should be every source. What, what should be looking at providing? You already provide service. Why provide another service to that same property? That's just one of our business policies. If a customer wants multiple services, I feel like they're entitled to have them. I would think you'd want the homeowner here. For this yeah, but they already have they already have service there. Yeah. Um, well, I think we should uh, figure out our next move. Um, would we like to um, uh, postpone? Is not the right word, but uh, kind of carry this over to the next meeting, give the homeowner a chance to uh, to chat uh, either with us or with uh, with Fred. Uh, or We're offline with Brian, whatever. Offline with Brian, uh, to, to kind of get a better idea of what's really going on. If I, if I could just add something, if I may, real quick, to uh, to what uh, Fred was just saying. There's, you know, many situations where a customer or homeowner would require second service. Um, what if he, you know, plans on um, having a second, like a like a, his in-law's house or something, he wants to meter that, or if he plans on running a business out of, a, of another unit, there's plenty of situations where that's a possibility. Yeah. And so that's why we, you know, we offer that. Yeah. But they don't usually require a new pole. And so whatever right. way the, the power is getting there for the first service, that's how the power gets there for the second service. Right, and so like the, the other option that we could have given him is to put a pole right in his front yard. But like, the customer is kind of inconvenienced by the fact that there's that crossover situation right there. So we could potentially trench along the road, like you had said earlier, um, within the town taking, so we don't trespass on 10-1's property. Mm -hmm. um, I could look into that as maybe our first alternative. I could pitch that to the customer to see if that's something we could do, because I feel like that's definitely something we could do. I'll also look at, look at some other factors in the area to see if that's, yeah. um, that's the right move, but why, why don't we, there is that AT&T transmission line, which I think is problematic. Yeah, for that particular trenching. But the, there's, you know, just, well, I guess Fred might be very interested in hearing why is it that they don't just 
extend the existing service or use the conduit for the existing service and another trench to get back to the barn um, or the garage. Um, it looks like there's a small building there. It's hard to say exactly what it is. Huh? Um, well, that's current. So that's his, if, I, yeah. if I'm guessing what you're looking at, that's currently like his, just his shed. Yeah. That's going to be moved and there's going to be actually a very large like a, oh, so the structure that's going to feed is not yet it's not yet built built okay um it's supposed to be able to house several rvs i believe that was the old um, uh -huh. diamond rv owner i believe i think uh -huh. he recently sold it I but, see. Um, so okay. it's going to be a pretty large structure so i think that's probably why he wants its own service so it's good well it's actually a big garage yeah what, what's the distance between the poles here you, you show property line distance here, but from the, the new pole going north or the new pole south to that? The two, two existing poles, what's the distance? Oh, between 17-4 and 17-6? The existing poles? No, so, the, well, proposed there is the, existing, the existing. Yeah, the proposed and the two existing. What are the distances? I currently don't have that on here, but I can get that to you. Okay, uh, so it sounds like we're gonna carry okay. this hearing over to our next meeting. Yeah. Um, so you want a motion. Does anyone want to meet out there? Uh, we can yeah, visit yeah. on our own. We can go see. Is, yeah. it, is it marked? Is it staked there where the, the pole will be? Ah, uh, yes. Well, I haven't been there this week. Those get ripped out all the time, but mm -hmm. it was staked. Okay, well, I think what we've been doing is going on our own rather than okay. meeting. And I think for this, yeah. unless. I mean, I'm not too far away. I'm only at Hadley, so I'd be happy yeah. to meet someone and talk about it more. Um, the, but in the you know, it sounds like the, the homeowner, though, is the person that's, I mean, the, your questions are really questions for the homeowner. Well, right. Um, right. So, yeah. so uh, I would uh, I could entertain a motion. I would make a motion that we, ex that we um, postpone this hearing until the next. Continue it. Continue the hearing. Yeah. Until the next um, select board meeting. And in the meantime, invite the property owner to um, have a conversation with either Brian or Fred or simply come to our next meeting for the hearing. Okay. And then obviously um, Eversource will chat with him as well. What should I uh, tell the customer in the meantime? Um, you can, I don't know if I can speak on your behalf, but you, you, say the time is being for other options. You can, you can say exactly what you heard at the public meeting. Okay. That'll be, uh, that might help prompt the phone call. Our next meeting as normally these motions we have to say a date in time certain are the uh, date would be uh, Wednesday September 25th um, the time if that agenda is not already full could be uh, 605 uh, for that motion uh, what well, time was that sir? 605 let's say town offices could it if we're done with, with this, I like to, to make a, a comment and, and, I, and I, I guess a, a request for future future dealings with, with, with Eversource, uh, particularly these uh, poles that are going to be placed for platforms and what, capacitors or regulators in, in the future. Uh, we've never seen a picture of what that looks like. We, we've we've Got, we know where there's one in the area that we looked at, but we've never seen a picture of what you're proposing for there's two or three locations in town. Uh, I, I guess I would suggest that as you move forward with the proposals, a, a picture of what it looks like, dimensions. You must have shop drawings of what sure. it's size and location, what it is. We heard some when we were at a field review, but you're saying, okay, you go 50 feet, you go down four feet for this, and then you're down another eight feet for the the bottom of the platform well that sure. then that was only that one location um, uh, i guess i'm i'm asking that we that you provide that in the future locations for these platforms that involve more than just the one pole all right so when we maybe submit one of these in the future for a regular capacitor would you like some sort of drawings mm -hmm. uh, like specs of the Actual units, yeah, yes. or even a link, or like a, a photo. Was sure. Yeah, photo yeah, I guess I can make that happen. Yeah, because like I say, so far we've never seen what what you're proposing other than discussion of what it is. And we don't know if the one here is the same as the one in Deerfield or the one in Sunderland. Sure. 
or wherever else. It's very reasonable. I could definitely make that happen. Okay. That, that would be the helpful um, motion. So, yeah, um, uh, officially. Officially, we, yeah, we, yeah, I, I knew we were going to vote on it. All right. So, the motion has been stated. The time and date have been stated. Uh, all in favor? We need a second. No, oh, I'm second. Nitpicker, but. I will second them. <laughs> <laughs> Pick your own nits there. <laughs> second, I will second the motion. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay, uh, thank you for your time. And thank I'll see you. you in a couple weeks. Sorry to do this. Hey, it's okay. All right. Just here to okay. be a kind of between the customer and the town. We've got one item under old business, and that is to discuss an award contract for the historic safe restoration project. And not that it will be unsafe, but it's the restoration of a physical safe that was not the adjective safe. Um, the, I see someone's here from the Historical Commission. Yeah. Um, would you care to say anything? Or, Brian, would you like to well, summarize first? We received two bids. One was from Mayland Conservation. Am I saying that right? Mayland? I think it's Mayland. Conservation and the other one was from wherever it is, Williamstown and Atlanta Williamstown. Uh, Art, Art Conservation Conservation Center. Right. Um, the mail bid was ten thousand three hundred dollars, and the Williamstown one was thirteen thousand three hundred fifty dollars. You have an email from Donna, and Donna's also here. But the Historical Commission is recommending that. Um, the select board vote to award the bid to Mayland Conservation. And this is a lump sum bid? That's a, it's no, a it's, a, it's a not to exceed bid. Not to exceed. The details of her budget include some out of pocket costs, some time, some travel, but not to exceed 10 3. So what, what would be less? If she and her assistant don't have to pay, it, it won't be less if she finds a local hotel for less oh, okay. than what she's estimated. The only, I think, per team would be the only thing that could be less. Okay, but if, if she needs to do something different to restore it, then that's still included in this price. It's a um, more, more it, material. It's a contract, well, it's a contract for a specific yeah. piece of work, and okay. she's the one who came and, and spent a couple of hours and looked at it, so I think that. Mm -hmm. uh, that hadn't actually occurred to me. I'm not, I'm not worried about it, <laughs> about, about it suddenly becoming more complicated than we think it is. Okay. Okay. I would make a motion to um, approve this contract to, to uh, mail-in conservation. Uh, um, second. Conservation, yeah. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thanks. Um, then we've got one item under new business to consider changes to the town hall building policy section five user fees and 7.0 insurance. Yep, so, so this let me turn that over to Brian. Sure. Um, this stems from the last meeting when we were talking with uh, Paul Newman about the user fees for uh, the Watermelon Wednesday concerts and how. Um, how the building policy in terms of user fees was written um, and how it affected it really the total cost that he had to pay because mm -hmm. he was using it for more than a four hour period so we were renting it in four hour periods so it was a sizable amount I think he was paying a, something along the lines of $375 and the board mm -hmm. voted um, Secretly, yeah. without choice. Um, oh, no, it's not a secret. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They didn't vote secretly. Um, they voted to just um, charge a fee for just the yeah. the hours of performance, so just the just the yeah. full hour block there. And this would make it true for everybody, not just for Paul who came this for. Yeah, that was that was that was the discussion. So um, we had talked a little bit about um, adding some language uh, to the policy to reflect that. Um, my only concern with this, Brian, yep. is that I'm a little worried that the asterisk is a little, 
Well, only for the time of the actual event, not including time for rehearsals set up before or breakdown after the event. Yeah. If I'm putting on a theater production and I'm gonna have a one night show. Oh, but by the way, Tanaway Lee, we're gonna rehearse for five nights. Yep. Um, this says we can't. Right. That gives me pause. Mm -hmm. That's true. Do we want to strike rehearsals out of there? I yes. guess I'm, I might. I don't really call the conversation with Paul. I don't think they talk about rehearsals. I don't think they, they do rehearsals. Well, they, they, do. they do is like sound check and they yeah, do Yeah, but that's not rehearsals. That's, that's not. That's set. Do you that's call set. more? Do you call better than I? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure it was just the performance time. So if he needed to come, if his concert was Friday and he needed to come in Thursday to do a sound check, we weren't going to charge him. Right, I get that. Okay. Yeah. But but again, if they if, if they're having a, a, a dress rehearsal, then, right? Then it, so, but I don't think what you just described, Amy, is what I would consider it a rehearsal. I would consider it set up. Yeah. Right. Right. Rehearsals are you're taking that four block, that four hour block. Mm -hmm. And, and I just think the rehearsal should be struck from that. And if they want, if somebody wants to come to us with an exemption, right. then that's something we can then, yeah. consider. I, I like that better too, because I was looking at that thinking rehearsals. Now, it seems... Amy, has that happened so far? Have people come to rehearse a day or so before? I haven't, no. Paul is really the only concert that okay. we have there. I haven't had anyone. Yeah, or, or and, and, we, and we consider the sound check and such part of a, a setup. Absolutely. I, and even if the band is actually up there playing in a song, <laughs> which might be considered rehearsal, but it's really a sound check. We're not they're not going through their whole play right. or their whole list. And I consider rehearsals sort of not day of. Yeah. That may be my personal definition, but. Yeah, that's 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 true, and I think. Uh, the wording is important for other uses. Right. And, and what what does setup mean? Is that is that mean moving or tables and chairs around as well, or just setting up on stage for the? For I think the it performer? means it's got to be both. I think. Yeah. So I think that so makes sense to be both. Well, I don't know. I'm asking. Are, so the the people that are renting the facility are are responsible for the chairs and the tables? Mm -hmm. They may be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yes, that's what we've been them. asking them to do so far. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We don't have the we don't have the staff to interview okay. the shares. But so that's what set up is understood to me. More than just set up on the on the stage. Yeah. Say. Yeah. So, yeah. I would say, but that's probably the, the smaller part of the time is setting up the chairs, setting up the sound system and mic wow. checks and those sorts of things are probably a lot longer. Okay. Or well, I don't know if it's a lot longer, but. Um, I think set up the stage and set up the room. I don't really think we should differentiate between those. I agree. That's too. Okay. That's getting too into the weeds. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just yeah. Under, but I, I understand I, what, yeah. what what's included. Yeah. Um, what that means. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so we'll just. So I would make a. Do I make a motion on this plan, or or do we just say? We can just. We'll, I would we'll just strike, what? including time for. Set up before or after, and just straight yeah. rehearsals. Straight for rehearsals, comma, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So if we straight for rehearsals, comma, it would read: um, asterisk if a fee is charged to attend the event, then the user shall pay the rate for all others, which refers to the table above, only for the time of the actual event, not including time for setup before or break down after the event. If you really wanted to the grammar place, it would be including setup time before or after, or before or break down after the event. Setup would be before time. Okay, the, um, I shall just read from the, the blue part. Only for the time of the actual event, not including setup time before or break down time after the event. Yes. Good thing I've got here. Good thing. Right. So then Good we can thing. just listen to it. We can just listen to it. For the minutes. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, so before we leave that, yeah, there was um, another. So so I sent these. I sent the proposed changes to the to director butters as we normally do. We'll uh -huh. Consider changes to the policy. And um, I talked with Mary Lou a little bit about both of these changes, and she um, expressed concern that 
using the asterisk, it sort of wasn't clear as to who this pertained to. So it's, the intent is that it pertains to a Whaley resident, Whaley based organism, that category of, of users. Okay. Um, that's where the asterisk falls. That's where the asterisk falls. Um, so we could substitute Whaley resident. These put all of that all in the those asterisk instead of the user, if we want to. Um, but I was just bringing that to your attention that that was the oh, comment okay. that I received. So we could read if a fee is charged to attend the event. And then yeah. a Whaley resident, Whaley based organization, Whaley based on property manager, Whaley based business shall pay okay. the rate for all of us. Right. If we want it to be very clear, I, I think, think we should be very clear. To. I think that was a good suggestion on her part. Yeah. What are you saying? No. What are you um, changing? Taking all of those words there, um, and taking down here it says the user, yeah. and make it be the Waitley resident, Waitley based organization. Like, be really specific about what you mean by a user in this case. So it means that someone who is not one of these Waitley based. Uh, can't claim they get the asterisk. I mean, the way the table's set up, there's no fee for Waitley based unless you're charging money. Right. Well, sure. So it, it, it doesn't change the meaning, but it makes it really clear. Some were reading this fast and they weren't from Waitley and they're like, oh, all others for up to four hours, blah, blah, blah. Oh, look, I only have to pay for the time we're on stage. That would be. Um, and we would avoid a misunderstanding, of, or potentially avoid a misunderstanding. But let me ask you this, because it strikes me that I'm not sure we want to charge for the setup time for anybody. Because setup time, you got to set up. So let's say, for example, the Harlem Boys Choir wanted to come and perform at the <coughs> Wayne Town Hall. And charge a fee. And charge a fee. We would charge them for that four-hour block, but I don't believe that we would charge them for I the setup. I think that should be on a <coughs> sorry on a on a case by case basis. Why? Because it gets gray. It gets gray pretty quickly, I think. Yeah. But no, I, well, that's what I'm saying. If we charge, if we if we if we decide on a case by case basis, it gets very gray very quickly. If we just say we're not going to charge for a setup, if somebody needs to get in there at four o'clock to set up, we don't want to charge. Well, them because for that. I think. Um, that's a different change than what was proposed here. I, oh, I get that. I'm, to. I'm saying is while we're addressing that. So you're not proposing we amend this? To I am proposing. I'm, I'm saying that we just simply never charge for setup, which is different than what we have had on this previously. Right. So you're proposing a further change, which means we have to first notify the abutters before we can vote. Okay, you're you got me like hit the white table. You yeah. got me there. Yeah. So we can't really do that. All right, let's, 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 let's do this, and then, but, but I would like to have that conversation, because it, it just. Okay, so we we'll make uh, the, I, I, so I would propose we, uh, in addition, make the clarification suggested by the abutter. Um, and then we could pick this up uh, another time to address John's concerns. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, before we leave this item, one other thing we, we, we talked about, and it's not reflected here, is the, the use of the meeting room. Paul says he uses the meeting room also to prepare. Yeah, that is a green room. It's yes, a green room, yeah. yeah. To prepare for the, the event. And there was some discussion of whether we should, char we should or should not charge him for that use of that meeting room, in addition to the auditorium. And I think we agree that we should not charge because the performer need a place to change their clothes, to, to unwind, to, it's a green room. We are not charging him for that. Right. Uh -huh. but is that, is that understood the way it's written here? Well, I, my understanding is that I don't know if we wanted that as a sort of a hard and fast rule, depending on what's taking place. Yeah. Again, I kind of do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then let's take that up when we take up your other issue. Uh, the idea of you're only charging for the um, for the actual event time. Okay, and, and let's do that soon because yeah. otherwise we're just making an exception for Paul, and we don't want to do right. that. Right. Okay. But with, maybe I don't understand what we're 
change it again, but, but would there be a, a need for the, the auditorium to have one use and the meeting room doing something else? Mm -hmm. Yes, I have that scheduled actually. At the same time? Yeah. yeah. So, same times, really? Yeah. So, so you can't, you can't yes. arbitrarily say the, the no charge for meeting room if you use an auditorium because... Make that, that would be problematic. Problematic, yeah. Yeah, I just assumed that if there was a performance going on upstairs, who on right. but not every, not every union, the not not everything upstairs is a performance. Right, there's dance groups that use the upstairs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's actually a couple dance groups that are going to be using the yeah. auditorium. Yeah, and I, I wasn't able to. I wasn't here for the discussion last time, and I have not had time to catch it on on FCAT. But I understand that that uh, there's been uh, some substantial upgrades to equipment in the town hall, and that was at least something that they we're asking us to consider. Yeah. Did that actually uh, come into play in your discussions? We chose not to not to think about that as part of our conversation. Okay, all right. Yeah, Neil gave us some comments on it. He wasn't overly positive, I guess I'd say about it. Uh, uh, I, 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 I thought he was. His email, well, the, the prep materials that I saw, it sounded like he was fairly positive. But, yeah, I just uh, don't, we just, yeah, my just decided not to. It, it wasn't okay. a factor. Oh, yeah. okay. Because we were doing a lot, and it just we were finding a compromise place. Okay. Okay. Let's okay. Then, so then, then we'd like to basically, with the additional change that the the mm -hmm. user would be replaced with the Waitley resident, Waitley based organization, Waitley based nonprofit organization, or Waitley based business uh, in the asterisk. So the asterisk is getting pretty long, but it's. It makes it more clear than we're good, um, with the intention of working out some uh, some details on what should be uh, like a more consistent policy from Jonathan's point of view. All right. So with that as a motion, do I have a second? Well, we got other changes on the next page. Oh, the insurance. Oh yeah. Well, can we take them one at a time? Um, so the first motion applies to Section 5 user fees. Um, the motion has been restated more times than is probably necessary. Is there a second? Second. Uh, all in favor? Yeah. Aye. Okay. Uh, good. And then the other was in Section 7. So how was that running? Yep. We had looked at this once before. Um, and I think, Fred, you had given me this sheet. Yeah. That you had done some research um, about the about the cost differences between the different policies. I think. Yeah. You have one. So you had made some phone calls to your insurance agent, right. and I think you had found that that first policy would have been 175. Yeah. But if you need uh, if you need to add the two million dollars in umbrella liability, it would increase it up to five hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah. Which is pretty Which for a one time event um, yeah. of seventy five people that's it's kind of steep. Yeah. Um, if we try and encourage use of the, yeah. mm -hmm. the top one. Um, so I also talked to Mary Wu about this a little bit and she she suggested that we use caution um, in, in looking at this um, in terms of just protecting taxpayers and yeah, that was going to be my question. What um, was the, the yeah, what does an umbrella cover that the first one, the bodily injury and property damage? It would be on top. It would be uh, it would be above and beyond. Okay, so, so it would be had, extra coverage. Yeah. So a million dollars of that particular kind, and then two million dollars um, on top of that. So we will be reducing the total insurance required from. $3 million to $1 million. For like an event, for an event, say. You'd be, you'd be reducing it from, so you have a million for bodily injury and property, and then you have a single limit with 2,000 annual aggregate limit. Right, but say you have one, um, one event that someone's going to have, they're not going to have a repeat time and time again, right? Um, um, well, then the well, combined... on Wednesdays, for instance, might. Right, we, sure. But um, if we're just 
I mean, it's, it seemed like the case. The, the other one is a yearly event as opposed to an, uh, each event as well. Right. So that's, um, uh, that, so if we're, for the moment, uh, a single event um, needs a million dollars for the bodily injury and property damage liability. Um, and then it says combined single limit with a $200,000 or two, sorry, two million dollar annual aggregate limit, but that two million dollar aggregate limit is when you have more than one event. So for someone who's doing a single event, they need the umbrella, which is another two million dollars. So they're basically going from uh, having to provide three million dollars worth of insurance to one million dollars worth of insurance, right? Yeah. And uh, with multiple events, it gets more complicated, but that would be essentially going down from five million to three million. Except that the two two million of that is an aggregate limit, right? right. So she's saying the two million may not be enough? I, I think she's just cautioning based on I think her experience in the corporal master what the mm. as to what jury, jury awards could be. Mm. Well, then do we, do we want to change 7.3 to say it says reserve the right to waive or reduce? Should we say the right to increase or change or alter the policy? I mean, if there's some event going on that we're not sure and about the liability issue, can we inc ask them to increase the I, liability? This doesn't say that. I guess we could. If it's really dangerous, I hope we would not do it. Just we're not not doing it. Well, yeah. Um, <coughs> You know, I, you know, we've heard a little bit from people that, it, that it's that it's difficult to get, but we we haven't heard that it's a a, a showstopper. We haven't heard somebody come in and say, "I'm not going to the, use the town hall because of this." Um, Why don't we so, just so we could we could just leave it for now and. Or, or just change that we reserve the right to alter or to use Fred's line change in either direction depending upon that covers it and then and then we leave it as is except for that change in language that covers us right to alter this is the baseline and then we can go up or down from that baseline so, so from a practical standpoint how do how does Amy or I administer that that's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I text you, you're gonna, it's going to be our problem. That's right. Ask yes, the chair. Well, I, we're not saying that we're, the select board chair reserves the right no. to wait. It, it no. sounds like no. they would have to come and ask yeah. um, on, a, on a case by case. And I, I think that they right. feel like their, their activity is not particularly um, risky, then we might be inclined to waive the umbrella liability right um and if we feel that there's more risk involved we can say no we really want to keep that um but, but it, that does mean that people have to come to a meeting yeah. would we waive all liability or oh no no no. Yeah. no there's one portion of the liability that uh, folks were saying is hard to get or is expensive certainly if you're doing one event in a year it, it triples a little bit more than triples the expense of insurance um, but you get triple the insurance, right? Uh, <laughs> so, so if you waive that, what insurance do they? They would have a million dollars of insurance rather than as a minimum. three million total, yeah. right? So it's it's not like the covered the, the the liability insurance would go to zero necessarily, um, but you know it might be that you don't want to charge the Girl Scouts for I don't know, but it, at, at any rate that. Um, this is only so, applicable for events over 75 attendees yeah. as well. So maybe, maybe yeah, right. Maybe we we'll just look with right. If the zoo comes to the town hall, then we yeah. maybe yeah right. Okay, so so then we maybe just change 7.3. Reserve right. the right to to alter any and all insurance requirements. That's what I would say. Take okay. that yeah. and redu okay. or reduce. Okay, and we can take that up when we take up uh, the things John was talking about because that would be a different change that we would need to notify others about. Okay. So, but, but I think I, I think it's it's a sensible one. Yeah. Okay. And it, it kind of takes into account her um, her say to use caution, 
and we think it's maybe a little more cautious than to not change it in 7.1.1, okay. rather change it in 7.3 to give us some flexibility with the noted caution from the judge. Does that, I mean, I feel like that's kind of a summary of what we're, okay. we're thinking. Okay, what should we do that? Change 7.3 and leave? No, we can't. Yeah. I, think, I think what we're well, saying is fair. We need to do that next time because we can't make that change right this Oh, okay. Right, right now. Okay, okay. So, so we okay. will take no action on the proposed change to 7.1.1. Okay. 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 All right. Very good. Okay. I think we're up to town administrator updates. We are. So I pleasantly. I had told um, the last week I had told Jonathan and Fred that I wanted to keep the ADA self evaluation plan progress and public comments as a uh, standing item until it's done. Okay. Uh, just so that it's people can people can feel oh, okay. if they want to come and talk about it, we they can. Okay. Um, so where we are with that now. We're really assessing two parts of this. Um, we need to assess our facilities, and we need to well, evaluate our facilities, and we need to evaluate um, our programs. Um, so the way- What's an example of a program um, for this purpose? So they talk about, so a program could be um, a, a literal program, so any, any talk that's put on, um, for instance, the library mm -hmm. does some, oh, okay. you know, some okay. things. Um, but it also means sort of it, it sort of means what happens if someone comes into a meeting uh, comes into this meeting and, mm -hmm. and requests you know an auxiliary aid mm -hmm. to uh, um, or a reasonable accommodation oh. um, things like that so I had uh, okay. been in touch with the Massachusetts Office of Disability about what they recommend um, and they sent um, they referred me to the New England uh, I think it's the New England ADA Center, mm -hmm. and they have this whole template so that we go through okay. um, to do the self evaluation. So to do the pro to do to assess the, the program part of it, there's a questionnaire that went out mm -hmm. um, to it's mostly boards and committees and department heads that we asked them to fill out. Um, they were due today. We didn't get too many for that. They gave me sent out a reminder email. Okay. And then the other part of the other part of it is we're going to evaluate um, our facilities. Mm -hmm. um, that was originally scheduled for the end of August, but that didn't happen. So we have a new date for September 9th. Um, so right now it's going to be with myself, Keith, uh, myself, Keith, Jim Ross, Larry Ashman, and Don Sluder. Um, other people are going to participate in that, and there's a big long chest checklist for each building that we're going to go through, and then okay. we'll take that. We'll take the information from the. Um, from the surveys and from the, um, the facilities evaluation, and I'll put those into our self-evaluation plan. And based on the self-evaluation plan, then we need to create a transition plan, which is pretty much mm -hmm. here's what you're, here's what's wrong with your facilities. Here's how you need to fix them. Here's what it's going to cost. Uh, I've talked with Jim and Jim Ross, and he's going to help out with sort of the, uh, the ballpark sense. estimates of, of the cost to do that. And again, all, all this is in preparation to apply for the municipal ADA improvement grant for the lift that's mm -hmm. being designed for the library. Yeah. Um, so that's where that is. That's we. I hope to submit that on October first. Um, okay. The deadline to to submit those are October eighth. Mm -hmm. So it gives us about a week when stuff happens. Yeah. We all know it does. Yes, it does. Now, does Brian? Does this include? Uh, say interpreters for people that, for language differences or for handicap for vision or hearing? Yes, we, we, have an, we have an obligation to provide reasonable accommodations. For all of them? For vision and hearing, not for, about not, interpreter? not for foreign language interpreters. Um, That's not disability. Well, we may have other obligations. Yeah. Um, they're just not under to ADA. do that, but I'm not sure that they're under ADA. Oh, right. okay, but the hearing and vision would be okay. Yep. Okay. Do we just have to recognize these issues or fund them? What do you mean by issues? Um, 
Well, uh, accessibility to the town garage bathroom. Um, you mean if we identify them, do we have to fix them? Right. No. Well, you just identify. Knowing, yes. Um, nobody's going to come and say we have to do it tomorrow, um, but we have an obligation. Um, let's say there's someone who, if there was somebody with a disability who worked for the highway department who needed to use a restroom, we would have to provide that person with right. an so accessible we're, restroom. We're, we're liable, essentially. Yeah. I mean, the same thing with, with the old with the old town offices. If someone had filed suit against us, we would have lost. But because they didn't, we sort of like, yeah. right. And in, really, the 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 objective of the ADA is is that our programs and the services we provide be accessible. So, for instance, one of the issues with the library right now is that the the stacks that are the existing stacks are not wide enough. Yeah. You know, for someone with a need, for someone in a wheelchair to, to, to navigate those. So yeah. we don't need to change the stacks, but we need to provide a uh, a process for if that person wanted a book that's located in the stacks, that they could get that book. So someone would be there. So it's about making the services and programs accessible, even though your yeah. facilities may not be 100 percent accessible. Does, okay. this, does this include FCAT making the, the video uh, uh, narrative available to anybody that, that can't hear? There are questions um, in the survey about our website, and it would it would apply to FCAT in terms of closed captioning and alternative ways that people would access information on the website. So that's a conversation mm -hmm. that we have to have mm -hmm. with our especially for visually impaired website developer. Yeah. 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 I think that's that's part of the website accessibility checklist, I believe, right? Okay. When it's the right thing to do, plus, so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good, okay. so we're moving on. So we're moving on that. Um, Hurley Heap Park softball field <coughs> construction has started. Yay. Um, okay. The group was out there, they've stripped the, the uh, Morse was out there, they've stripped the, the saw off the field, and I think they worked on the subgrades. I drove by today and they were, they were down there working, so. Oh, there you go. Um, that's that's going. Um, water merger project. Uh, people may have noticed that there's a bump in Chestnut Plain Road because um, before the winter, the goal was to get the pipes for the project across the road uh, from where they'll connect mm -hmm. to the uh, the district system. It's really in front of John Hammond's house, um, over to um, north of the cemetery. Mm -hmm. So that's been done. Um, so we'll have to, we'll be waiting until the springtime for that. Um, we're going to start the well. The engineer will start the permitting with the Conscom for the location mm -hmm. of the pumping station. Um, should be doing that very soon, as well as um, starting the permitting process with Mass DEP for the connection modifications. So that's on track. Um, Who will be advertising that project? What's that? Well, the, will we be at the town advertise or will it be DEP? Or? The town will. Town will. Okay. Yep. Um, sidewalk project. So that design work still continuing. Um, so I, our mining Keith's hope is that we'll have a preliminary layout of the sidewalks. Um, hopefully by the end of September, um, mm -hmm. circulated to the board. Um, In time for our next meeting, twenty fifth. No, I probably for the October. Meeting. Probably for the October meeting. I think the goal is to have a public meeting in October, maybe mid October. Oh, okay. Um, and we'll do some. We also need to do some targeted outreach um, to the Whitley Inn because that gets tricky right. up there. How that's going to play out. Um, so that should. It's yeah. Still moving forward. Again, the goal is for that also to be. A, we got a lot of spring projects. Um, yeah, so you do. Oh, sorry. That would probably go out. Ideally, that would go out to bid this winter. Um, mm -hmm. That way, we have it, everything in place for the spring. Um, this is this is a new this is a new pro not a new project, but it's a sort of a new item. And I think Jonathan, you were included as the highway department liaison. Um, the city of Northampton is looking at doing a significant amount of tree removal um, of dead of dead and diseased trees. Um, um, just past the um, 
Mountain Street Reservoir mm -hmm. on Haydenville Road going into Waverly. Um, mm. And there's talk, there's talk about the possibility of needing to close the road for a couple of days because it would require the use of a crane um, to be able to wow. get oh, um, people are gonna be the trees in there. So um, we're going to be setting up a meeting with uh, myself, Keith. Um, I think she's, she's a DPW director in Northampton. Yeah. Um, and Jonathan is a highway department liaison. That her preliminary mm -hmm. meeting to talk about what that's going to take. Messaging signs, probably what a week in advance to let people know that if road closures need to happen, they're going to happen. Um, media, all that kind of media. stuff. Media. Um, but the idea is that using the crane, it will have a lot less impact. The crane will stand on the road, obviously. Right. But they'll, no. be able to, they'll be able to pick Crushing. the trees out and not um, impacting the wetlands very much. But it'll be impacting the traffic. traffic so it's something that we need to keep on our radar. Mm -hmm. Oh, is this from the town line to their entrance, or is it go north of the entrance? It's from, um, I don't know if that's north, north or south. It's from the, the tip of the reservoir that's in Waitley, yeah. mm -hmm. up, up towards, closer to the, into Waitley. Okay, so. Didn't explain it very well, but. Okay. Well, no, I, could, I could pull up a, <laughs> a, a well, From the tip of the story. reservoir, which is obviously in Waitley. Yeah. If they're, if they're going towards door. Williamsburg. Mm -hmm. Going towards Waitley. Going into yeah, Waitley. Yes. So not any trees that are directly adjacent, for lack of a better word, to the reservoir, right. but beyond that. Right. Aren't they all That's the preliminary map. map. That's a preliminary map. map that we have so that I, I've seen. I have the um, assessor's map. Yep. That's, so that's the tip of the reservoir in Waitley, and then you're saying it gets closed. No, uh, Mountain Street Reservoir. So oh, that's further. that was further. This so is all your truck traffic issue. They're uh, there. Temporarily, well. you're right. <laughs> but is there, is there entrance in Waitley to their I guess I'm not familiar enough with the reservoir, or is that in Hey, no. Because Mountain Street is happening. Why do they want to cut trees on Hainville Road? I don't know. Because <laughs> their, their feet are broke. Oh. Because feet on the reservoir. Yeah, where, where is the reservoir? It's just the assessor's map. I can get a Google map up there. That might be better. I know. <laughs> okay, so that gets us out to. So here we go. There's Mountain Street Reservoir. It's okay. in this area. So it'd be closing Mountain Street. What did I say? You go closer into that. I thought you said um, Haydenville. It is. It's Mountain Street in Williamsburg, and then it turns to Haydenville Road. And, oh, okay. And Waitley. Can you can you zoom in on that, please? Uh, on this part? Yeah. yeah. Sure. So it's from the it's the north tip of the reservoir going north. Okay, so starting up here, and then going north. And what road is the one that's Mountain? That's Mountain Street, but that's not in Waitley. No. Why do we get to pl change, close their road? I mean, what? I don't. Mountain the town Street line's road not. Road over there, we we're going to be closing. So w w what I think will be Mountain proposed is that it will be closed at the intersection of Adams Road. Right, that's Adams Road. Um, in yeah. Mountain Street. Yeah, Adam's Road is a little further down from there. So that's where, right? that's the, the logical place to close it. Okay, because I think that's Adam's is there. Okay, so they're going to close it from kind of the southern tip of the reservoir there up to Weber Road? Um, we haven't had that specific discussion. Oh, no, we haven't discussed on Monday. But potentially that, I mean, that yes. makes some sense, although there are some houses here. It'll be happy. It'll be. It'll it, be close to through traffic, but open to open to lo uh, traffic. Open. Okay. No, it, we haven't had a. You know, okay, so we don't have. We don't have too many details, details but that's okay. the proposal. For all right, people. Road might get closed. Is this okay. any way coordinated with the the future project going to be at Hanville Road? So you only cut trees once and not no. twice. No. That, no, that project is time undefined. Yeah, so that project yeah, it's got a whole right, other time. Right, I, guess, so. but, well, I guess you get three <laughs> twice. You can get them, yeah. Yeah. All right, right. get them now, you get them next time. Okay. Got it. So we'll have okay. more information about that. Is that it? Uh, yeah, uh, he's, he's got plenty of stuff for you. There's like five more. <laughs> but it's, 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 and it's, it's early. But it's going to be know, like I, one minute per item. It's going to be a hard stop to make. So. Uh, Papa Hill Road, legal transaction, that's done. Yeah. Um, we own it now, so um, right. the order of taking was signed and recorded. Um, How many land barons? 
Okay. But we appreciate um, Smith's College uh, initial commitment, well not initial commitment, their commitment of $60,000 to um, take care of that run. ongoing support to yeah. resurface uh, an upgrade Poplar Hill Road from the where it ends now, the dirt portion, the pavement portion up to the, uh, the environmental classroom up there. Can I ask something to put on their website to acknowledge their receipt yeah. of 60000 to tell people in town we, we're getting money from them and we should send a letter to them. Yeah, I want to talk, I want to talk with them a little bit about some sort of PR. Yeah, okay, or, or yeah. Yeah, advertise their yeah. facility there or whatever they want down there, but yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I forwarded you the letter from Natalie Blaze. Blay? Blaze? Blay. 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 Uh, well, it wasn't from Natalie, but it was about um, Climate Action Now. There's a um, presentation in Williamsburg, in Williamsburg yeah. uh, September 9th, about two uh, it's on my calendar. green I bills. Yeah. Um, so I think you guys have that. Yeah. Um, and then one thing I need to follow up on, I was thinking today, Fred, you haven't heard anything about the intersection, the traffic counts, and the, the turning movements. No. Since it's been a while. Uh, since our last meeting we had here with, okay. with Furcog and, uh, and Mass Highway. So I'll follow up on that. And I, I, one thing to have on our calendars is um, Green Communities application, for the grant applications, mm -hmm. those are due in January. Um, mm -hmm. So we don't have any current projects, so we're eligible to apply for Green Communities grant. It's going to require some preliminary work in terms of. Um, cost estimates and cost savings to make sure that yeah energy um, improvement improvements. Improvements. Um, so we just need to keep that in mind because it's going to be October before we know it in right. November and then we're going to be the application is going to be out and we're going to yeah. Um, yeah if we have we're some working on some stuff right okay. now okay good Glenn you're your energy committee at work yep and then the last thing we're still for the municipal energy aggregation we're still waiting on DPU um, we've responded to two requests for information and uh, the consultant, our consultant doesn't think there's going to be any others. Who knows? Um, so it's, mm -hmm. we're kind of stuck in the DPU. Right. Yeah. Um, Bureaucracy. Bureau yes. Okay. Yep. And uh, that uh, curtain restoration for the historic oh. curtain, we talked about historic safe, we talked about historic curtains. Um, is scheduled for the 11th and the 12th, um, that backdrop curtain okay. um, it's being restored. And there's also a talk from the restorer about restoring curtains on September 11th at 7 p.m. If anybody's interested. Mm. Um, at Town Hall. At, at, at Town, Town Hall. Hall. Yep. Hopefully with the curtain in place. Yeah, yeah. hopefully. Okay. I guess we'll see. Going back to yes. Green Community for a second. Yep. Do you have a number on the max <coughs> amount i want to say it's 250 but I'll, I'll find out for i'll let you know for sure is there a total a total lump nut that is out there and then you can apply for 250 of that x or um, there's got to be a cap on what's available out there i'm just trying to determine you know the the the, the delta of, of when the when we become our own worst enemy because we're asking for more of the a higher percentage then right um, you don't know the amounts from what I recall the amounts fluctuate per year as to what's available can we find that out yep but if we asked for more than 250 for the town hall were not we like 260 or something or, or we got what was your award for like 260 um I don't Tom recall. Was more, more than that. Well, we applied once, and then they, they, well, they told us to increase the amount if you wanted, because there's more money available. And we did something like that, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I know for the historical, we got additional money, but I don't recall if it was the green communities or not. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, right. our longtime green communities person in Western <clears throat> Massachusetts, Jim Barry, who was there since the inception of the program. Um, he retired this past year, so. Has he been replaced? Not that I've, I haven't seen an announcement or anything. It was too bad because he was a 
it was very helpful in getting money out here. Okay, now is that it? That can be it. All right, I would entertain a motion. Adjourn. Second. All right, all in favor. Uh, all right.